Today we review a box, a box with a huge V8 engine and doors that make machine gun noises. The G-Wagon has been around for a very, very long time, over three decades in fact. This is a vehicle that looks as close in aerodynamics and styling to a tank as basically anything else on the road. Mercedes says that the G-Wagon is the square root of legendary design. And it is true, this is a square, and it is a legend. From the outside, the G-Class may look like a bare-bones military vehicle, but it is anything but that. You have nice luxury on the inside, and it has a suite of hardware features that enable it to be a legitimate off-road vehicle. It's also not cheap. With a base price of nearly $120,000, this comes extremely close, almost identical, to the S550, which is one of our favorite cars that Mercedes makes right now. The Mercedes G-Wagon doesn't just have rugged looks, it's incredibly sturdy. Just listen to the sound the doors make when you close them. Pretty satisfying, and what's even better, listen to this lock sound. It sounds like you're loading a 50 caliber sniper rifle. Weighing at over 5,500 pounds, this thing weighs more than two Fiat 500s combined. Fortunately, it has a large engine to move it forward. A big 5.5 liter naturally aspirated V8 that makes 382 horsepower and 391 pound-feet of torque. It'll do 60 in about 6 seconds, which is actually kind of terrifying in a thing with these kind of dimensions. Corners are not your friend. This car records a absolutely pathetic, one of the worst we've ever heard, yeah. 0.56 Gs of lateral acceleration. You ask this car to change directions quickly and it uh, doesn't agree with what you're saying. Look at this. I'm gonna turn the steering wheel back and forth really fast. The car didn't respond at all. You turn it a little more and the car just rocks back and forth. Yeah. But <laughs> in terms of precise handling, it doesn't got it. But let's be honest, this car was not designed to perform well on the track. It was designed to be both a capable on-road vehicle and a very capable off-road vehicle. It is an unfortunate fact that the majority of G-Wagons are never used to their full potential. They're driven by suburban soccer moms from the hair salon to soccer practice and spend most of their time parked on the curb looking extremely expensive. After driving it for a brief amount of time, I'm already blown away by how much of a badass vehicle this is. So if you're gonna get one, please, please use it to its full potential. This might be the most sturdy vehicle either of us have ever been in. Like, everything, everything is... feels so solid. Well, that's a little plasticky, but right. we'll, for we'll forget about that <laughs> part. <laughs> you might be wondering, why does a Spartan off-road vehicle appeal to mostly the upper class, and this is a $120,000 vehicle. Well, it's because of what's inside. Not only does it look incredibly badass on the outside, it has a lot of luxurious features in the inside. It's got leather everywhere, excellent wood trim. You've got heated seats in the back, of course heated seats and cooled seats in the front, a heated steering wheel, park assist, surround sound, a hell of a lot of features that help differentiate this from a Jeep Wrangler. This is not to say the G-Class has gone soft. It has permanent all-wheel drive, a two-speed transfer case, three independent locking differentials, eight inches of ground clearance, plus an additional eight inches of suspension travel, meaning you can go through some pretty gnarly terrain. Also, it can wade through almost two feet of water. The headroom in this car is absolutely ridiculous. I'm five foot 11, there's easily a, like a foot <laughs> of, of room above me, yep. you're six two, there's it's, plenty of room. Awesome. Cargo space is crazy. With the cubic shape of this car, it allows a lot of cargo space in the back. Then you mm -hmm. fold the rear seats down, you get an enormous amount. Interestingly, for a car that's this big, the rear legroom is not very good at all. You've got a lot of headroom, but legroom and then also width-wise, this is a very narrow car, um, you feel pretty close to the it's person very narrow next to you. vehicle. Some of the technology in this car is a bit antiquated, like the backup camera graphics are terrible compared to new age Mercedes. The whole infotainment screen in general is a little bit lacking. It looks like they honestly just took a very cheap tablet and just glued it to the center console for the center info screen. It's not, compared to the S-Class screens, it's nowhere close. In terms of competitors, there really aren't many. You have the Jeep Wrangler, which off-road wise will easily keep up with these and in some cases probably beat this thing. But 
from the luxury and prestige standpoint, this will blow any Jeep Wrangler out of the water. The Range Rovers, Land Rovers, they are also very capable off-road. You have luxury, you have prestige and name with all that. That's pretty much the only car that can come close to kind of equating to this. This really is a unique vehicle. And that's not even talking about the insanity of a G63, a G65, or the 6x6, or any of that thing. This car is extremely unique, and I think it's one of the coolest things I've gotten to drive. The driving position is incredibly unique yes. in this car. You're so vertical and high up over the ground. You yeah. feel like you're dominating the road. Instantly, when I got behind the wheel, I started laughing. Like, just, it, it, it's so yeah. different than, than what you're used to yeah. and, and almost comical, yeah. yet aggressive, capable, and badass at the same time. I just didn't know what to feel or think. It's, it's interesting to see how 120 grand will either get you into an S-Class or this thing. And after driving this, to be honest, I don't know which one I would do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you next video.